It is uh, Good Friday. Sharon is, is back there setting it up. We have a nice little drama that the children are putting together. Uh, where are you building right now? Uh, the tomb. How does it... You see it? it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing the tomb. And I'm done, actually. I just need to paint it. You waiting for me? Can you guys see it? They yeah. can see it. It's so cute, huh? It's really big. It goes all the way to the wall. Look, can you see? Can you put it up? I don't want to adjust uh, it. Yeah, it's well, really, really cute. Let's see. There it goes. Yeah, it goes yeah. down. The kids are doing a drama, and we have a, a little kid who's playing Jesus, and he's going to go into the tomb and break out of there. Um, of course, I'm going to approach it as if maybe some people don't know what Good Friday is. Uh, Good Friday, first of all, is not, it's not in the Bible. It is a church tradition that I learned to appreciate uh, in prison. I remember the very first time I even went to a Good Friday service. It was in uh, Terminal Island, which is in Long Beach. And uh, when I when I experienced that service, uh, I told myself that when I pastor a church, I would have a Good Friday service. I, I'll never forget it because we were used to going to chapel every uh, Sunday morning for a regular service, and um, and this time it was going to be different. And, and I was like, man, what, what's a Good Friday service? So. Walking in, everything was dark and a few lights, and the sound was playing from The Passion, The Passion of the Christ, the movie, and you can hear real low as people walk, as we were walking in, uh, when they were whipping him in the whipping post. And as soon as you walked in, you heard that, and the darkness, and it brought a very real, somber feeling as we walked into the chapel. And I remember feeling like it was a, in a sense, a, a funeral for Jesus. And I liked the fact that it made us reflect on what really happened on that Friday on the cross. So it's been something that I have carried over. And when I started House of Rest, ever since the beginning, we've had a Good Friday service. Uh, I actually even made a, a Good Friday rap song. Actually, I'm gonna include the link to my song. Uh, so when you see this in the morning, I'm gonna put a link in the description box and it's a rap song I did in back in 2013 called Good Friday. So if you like it, comment on that video actually. It's on our channel, but to make it easy, It'll be in the description box. Um, <clears throat> it's a very short verse that I'm going to talk about today. It's in the Gospel of John. John, like I said in another previous video, was the one closest to Jesus. He was the youngest apostle. And uh, he wrote this talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. And he says this in, in cha uh, John chapter 19, verse 30. It says, when Jesus, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So Jesus is on the cross and something prophetic that he had always said from the beginning. He says, no one takes my life. I give my life and I take it back. So even here on the cross in excruciating pain, Jesus did not die on anyone's terms, but his own. And he says, it's finished. And after he said that, the Bible says that Jesus says, I I commend my spirit, I give my spirit, and he took his last breath, and he died. And 
I remember reading this as a new Christian. And uh, I, I like the fact that that he gave up his own ghost. He gave up his own spirit. Yeah. But I didn't realize how much deeper those words went until later on. Uh, it is finished, guys. Um, it's a proclamation. It's a declaration of war. It is a statement that it's not just on the surface he's saying it is finished, talking about this, this deed, this, this crucifixion. Yeah, it's finished. <clears throat> he was saying something much more profound and so much more deeper. Uh, for, for From the beginning of time since the fall, the enemy had reigned here on this earth. He, the, the Satan or Lucifer or, or uh, the devil was the one that reigned. He took away the authority from Adam and Eve. He took away their identity. He took away their fellowship with God. And <clears throat> humanity had run amok ever since. And nobody could set man free. And Jesus said something on his very first proclamation early on earlier on before the crucifixion he he read the book of isaiah and he said he began to read where it said um that he came to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free and give sight to the blind and um that proclamation of set the captive free he was talking about something much more than slavery or you got to remember Rome was um, oppressing or, or had uh, made Israel a, what's, I'm always forgetting words. Well, no, well, Rome had basically taken over nations and Israel was one of them. So the people were oppressed by Rome. But he was talking about something much more than setting the people free from Rome. He was talking about setting the people free from sin. So when Jesus is on the cross and he said it is finished, <coughs> it was a declaration of war against the enemy. He's saying it is finished. You no longer reign here. It is finished. I have given the people a way to be set free. It is finished. I'm coming to break the chains. It is finished. My people will no longer be bound by you. A new kingdom was coming. And that kingdom was the kingdom of God that was about to invade the earth. It is finished. So, <clears throat> do you guys know that when, um, when you come to Christ to surrender, your sins were forgiven past tense. Everything you have ever done, everything you have ever sinned, everything has been forgiven past tense. It's just up for you to receive it. It was done already. It is finished. It is complete. You are whole. And all you have to do is receive it. Can you imagine... Uh, having a winning lottery ticket in your pocket or the lotto, those big, huge ones and people are in line. You know, everybody wants this huge lotto. Yeah, and you have the winning ticket in your wallet. And imagine if you're broke. Imagine your car is broken down. You're, you're, no food in the house. Yeah, there's no food. Your clothes are ripped. Your shoes are, are all scuffed up. You're about to get evicted. Yeah, you're about to get evicted. You can't pay the bills. I've turned off your light. Yeah. And you just continue living like that, but you have this winning ticket in your wallet. It is the same thing, actually much greater. Jesus is saying, I have given you something greater than a winning ticket. Mm -hmm. I have given you salvation. I have given you a way out. I have given you the riches of heaven. And it's right there. And all you have to do is, is redeem the ticket. Redeem the ticket. That's all you got to do. And you don't. Guys, 
I, I get emails, I get messages from some of you or people before saying, um, I can't stop drinking. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop doing that. How did you do it? And, 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 and I can't give you this huge formula. I can't give you anything. And, and I think it, sometimes it goes over people's heads because it's so simple. You know, it's so simple is I redeemed my ticket. You have that ticket because it was given to you 2,000 years ago that when Jesus said it is finished, it, that ticket was already printed with your name on it. And all you got to do is redeem it. How do you redeem it? Uh, you, you, it, it there's an exchange that happens. It's called the great exchange. And I love my, my, my younger brother, Angel, Pastor Angel, has shared this before. It's called the great exchange. Is he wants all your junk. And he says, give it to me. You know, actually, there's a scripture on my wall, Matthew eleven twenty eight, that I can't even read it. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you yeah. rest. Yeah, Matthew eleven twenty eight. In the words of Jesus, He says, "Come, Come to me, all of you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Are you tired? Are you tired of depression? Are you tired of suicidal thoughts? Are you tired of addiction? Are you tired of not being a good husband? Are you tired of not being a good wife, not being a good parent, not being a good brother or good sister? Are you tired of not being a good son or a daughter? Are you tired of the weight? Because I don't know about you, but I used to carry weight on me that when I surrendered to Christ, I literally felt weight come off of my shoulders. That's what that verse is saying. Jesus is saying, if you're tired, bring that weight to me. And nail it to my cross. And he says, and I will give you rest. There is no rest like there is in Jesus. There is no rest that can complete you. You might have tried everything. You, 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 you go out, you do this, you do that, trying to fill that void and I'm telling you right now that the only thing that will fill that void is Jesus Christ. There's a missing puzzle piece in your heart, and he's the missing puzzle piece that you no longer have to be hurting anymore. It is finished. It's like, just receive that. Receive the fact that it is done. That You know why we call it Good Friday? Because it was a bad Friday for him. Because he suffered. He suffered. He took the whipping, the thorns, the, the crown of thorns on his head, the, the ridicule, the blasphemy, his beard being ripped out. And he did that on that Friday so you can have a good Friday. So good Friday is simply a remembrance of what Jesus did for all of us on that cross. And he offers a free ticket and all you got to do is redeem it you know and, and the biggest tragedy ever is for somebody to die and all along they had that ticket and all along all you had to do is redeem it the great exchange is you give your sadness for his joy. You give your brokenness for his, for, for his completeness. You give your depression and he gives you rejoicing. You give him your tears and he gives you happiness. And most of all, you give him your sins and he gives you forgiveness. He gives you mercy. He gives you his love he gives you his understanding. He gives you everything. Why would you not redeem that ticket? Can you imagine if somebody had a lotto ticket, a winning number, 
And all their life, they lived with that thing in their wallet. And then, and then on their deathbed, can you imagine on the deathbed, you're about to die and your family's all around you and you say, can you take out my wallet? Can you take out this piece of paper? It's my lotto ticket. <laughs> it's like somebody saving all their money their whole life on under their mattress and they die on it. Yeah. She said, I don't know if you could hear her, but it's somebody that saves all their money under their mattress. And then they're, as they're laying on that mattress, they reveal that they've been rich all their life. And they die on it. And yeah, they die on that mattress. You know, you, there's one thing, guys. Um, there's one regret I have in being a Christian. I'm going to be real. There's one regret I have. My biggest regret is this, is that I accepted or surrendered to him when I was 32 years old and not when I was a younger man. I wasted my years following something other than God. I wasted my years chasing after things that weren't God. I wasted those years. When I see young people and they're on fire for God, I get jealous. Because I'm like, man, Lord, why didn't I give you my 20s? Why didn't I give you my teens? That's my biggest regret, is not surrendering to him earlier. Because it's like I had this redeem, I had this ticket all along, and I didn't redeem it till I was 32. And then even then, I spent six years in prison. And, and so really, it's like, I surrendered at 32, released at 38, and then I quickly went into my 40s, and I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. You, you gave me this ticket 2,000 years ago, and I'm so sorry that it took me this long to redeem it. But I made a promise to God that from this day forward, every day of my life I will worship you I will serve you I will teach for you I will proclaim your message through YouTube through Facebook through t-shirts through rap songs through books to whatever way when I stand up there and preach why do I do it because I made him a promise that he gave me my life back he gave me salvation he he gave me mercy and forgiveness and because of that, I will proclaim his name to the world. You know, just, I don't know what else to say. This is Good Friday. It truly is Good Friday. Because of what he did on that Friday. You know, so, um, guys, reflect on that. Reflect on what he did on the cross. You know, and... I'll end it with this, that even though it was a horrible Friday, Sunday's coming. Oh, yeah. That turn will be rolled away. Sunday is coming. Woo, come on. We don't worship a God that has a grave. Other religions do. We worship a God that has an empty grave. Sunday is coming. So, God bless you guys. And, uh, oh, check this out. I like, sorry, I like showing off our shirts. Look at this. Jesus is a senior pastor of my church. Because he truly is. I'm not the pastor here. I'm not the senior. I'm a pastor. But Jesus is a senior pastor here at House of Rest. And that is his pulpit. Well, not the ladder, but when the pulpit's there. <laughs> it's his pulpit. It's all about him. It's all about him. Nobody else died for you. No pastor died for you. No evangelist died for you. No televangelist died for you. No church building died for you. No church ministry died for you. Jesus died for you. Him and him alone and him we worship. At least that's what I see in the Bible. And because of that, that's what we teach here. That it's him and him alone. Yeah. So, uh, all right, guys. I, to I told them, 
I told you I didn't want to do a long video and it's 20 minutes. Hi guys. So uh, have a good Friday. Reflect on what he did on the cross for you. And remember, Sunday's coming. <laughs> I want to rejoice. Yeah, God bless.